So every now and then, a film comes along that is so original and so genre-bending that it instantly becomes a cult classic. And today, we're going to talk about that film. Howdy folks, I'm Uncle Bill from Dead Pit Radio, and today we're going to be reviewing completely unique film that was just released on the 18th from uh, second sight films and a brand new deluxe edition box set that is well worth the wait if i do say so myself we're going to be talking about this wonderful film possessor directed by brandon cronenberg david cronenberg's son and before we get into the actual film itself Let's talk about like the actual packaging and some of the stuff that comes with this edition of Possessor. So as you can see, it's got a J card and you can kind of take the J card off. Ton of uh, special features and limited edition contents in here, including, and I'll get into that shortly. There is a brand new full color book that includes tons of behind the scenes photos of the film and the making of the film concepts of the film some of the script and a lot of behind the scenes photos that are in here and so that is an awesome addition to this you've got lobby cards for lack of a better word, but you don't see these a lot in many editions, but they're awesome. So there you've got the main kind of artwork. You've got the uh, face mask from the film. You've got whatever that contraption is that they use to put the put the bodies into other people you've got Voss you got this fella right here this <laughs> handsome man and another another photo of Voss but yeah you just uh you just don't see these anymore. And they're, they're really amazing to look at. As well as the 4K and the Blu-ray editions of the film. And a pretty amazing package. Let's talk about the film itself and then we'll come back and I'll talk about the, uh, the special features in, on this limited edition. But um, Possessor is a film came out in 2020 and it is Brandon Cronenberg's film and Brandon Cronenberg for people that don't know is really taken over in his father's footsteps David Cronenberg and in creating these kind of sci-fi horror um body kind of morphs of films and this one to me is one of his most successful attempts at that uh, of course, he did Infinity Pool. This came out in 2020, and then he did Infinity Pool after that. But Possessor is the story of an elite kind of group of assassins that work for a corporation in which they can implant these microchips in other people's heads. And from those microchips, one of their assassins can take over the person's body, possess them, and then complete the assassination without ever having to be caught or worried about being caught or anything like that, which is to me, I don't, I, I've never heard of anything like this in a movie. It's a pretty ingenious kind of plot premise to start off with, which is that you've got this company that, you know, can guarantee these assassinations without any kind of proof or without any kind of, uh, trail that would lead back to anybody because they're possessing the bodies of like normal people, to, to complete these attempts. The issue that, that I guess comes along, the, the driving force of the film really, is that the main assassin, like the top assassin in the company, Voss is her name, she 
is starting to have this weird kind of fixation on blood and death and carnage. And it's really starting to intrude with her regular family life. She has a, a husband and a child rather than her wanting to be at home uh, with them. She wants more so to be like in the life of an assassin, which I thought was a really, uh, a really interesting take because normally in films like this, where you've got an assassin, it's like they really just want to get out of the life and they want to spend time with their family. But that's definitely not the case here. Every time that she's with her family, who by the way, have no idea like what she does because she doesn't tell them she wants to be back, you know, completing these gruesome kills and taking part in these assassination attempts, which another part of the movie too are the gruesome kills, which are very graphic and probably one of the things that sets this movie apart from any of your other kind of standard attempts at a assassination, you know, murder for hire, John Wick kind of thing, which is the level of gore in this film harkens back to like early Cronenberg stuff where he was doing the, the body horror and shocking people and that kind of went away for a while, but it's really coming back with this. And, and the two films that I have seen Cronenberg do, Brandon Cronenberg's uh, Infinity Pool and this one, it's really coming back in a big, bad way. In this one, like, for example, the the this is the unrated version of the film, uh, which there's two versions. There's the R-rated and the unrated. The R-rated you'll see a lot of times on streaming services, but I highly recommend that you get this version of the film because it contains extended scenes of gore that you're just not going to see anymore. Um, like the first uh, assassination attempt is a stabbing that goes on for like a really long time. There's a really gruesome kind of after effect of that. Um, but as the film progresses, um, it becomes clear that uh, Voss, who, as I said, is the main assassin of the film, um, it's kind of become an unhinged and it's kind of part of reality is, is crumbling for, her and you don't know where, you know, the assassination part ends and reality begins and, and melding with the bodies is really taking a toll on her. So that's a big driving force of the film too. There's these long trippy hallucination scenes that are really done great they're done practically from what i can understand too not a lot of visual effects are used in these uh, it's done with like a lot of overlapping um of films and stock and creating filters and things like that that stuff that's way beyond me but i know um there's a there's a great featurette that talks about like how he does these hallucination scenes on this edition as well but where things start to kind of like you know blend in uh, and there's some great, great time lapse photography scenes of, you know, when the hallucinations are taking place and the bodies are kind of melding into one another. And it just looks like so well done. The practical effects in the movie are so well done. But as the movie progresses, you know, the um, the leader of this this corporation um, and I haven't seen her in a whole lot of stuff uh, since hateful eight i believe would have been the last thing that i actually remember kind of seeing her in but the the lead of the corporation is jennifer jason lee who plays girder um she's the the head of the assassination team and she recognizes that that voss is her number one assassin she wants to keep her around but she also recognizes she's kind of falling apart so she sends her on like this this big mission which is to take out um or to possess the body of this guy colin tate who is a low-level kind of drug dealer and take out her wife and her wife's father who is this big time corporation leader and i guess that the stepson is the one that hired this out to be done uh this disgruntled kind of stepson so she enters like the guy's body and that's where the movie really kind of takes off. And through that, all kinds of, you know, stranger, strange things, no pun intended, start to happen. 
And it seems like she starts to really enjoy being in, in this guy's body. Eventually there's a mission to complete here. And Sean Bean, who I, again, that's another guy that I haven't seen in a whole lot and everything I have seen him in, he always ends up getting killed in it. So Sean Bean is the dad that, you know, is the, the rich corporation owner that is part of the, you know, the whole thing. And when it comes time and it comes down to it and you know, the assassination has to take place. His death scene is one of the most memorable scenes in the film. Um, Cause essentially like it's just full of gore and just blood. And it's, it's, it's amazing in a lot of different ways. Um, so that takes place. And then along with that, uh, the wife is killed as well. As that's happening, you notice that Voss is becoming more and more obsessed with just torture and like the way that she's kind of carrying out these murders is becoming more and more violent and more and more torturous. And the hallucinations and things are becoming more and more severe. And reality is really starting to kind of collapse on itself. And through the through the film you kind of see like how girder tempts to to prevent that from collapsing on her number one assassin which you know brings to the end of the film which is one of the most surprising endings that i've seen um i and i you, you it really subverts all of your expectations about what you think the ending is going to be. And it is a, it's, I wouldn't say it's an M night Shyamalan kind of ending. It's not that much of a twist, really. It is a twist, but it's not that goofy. Um, but it is shocking and memorable and one that will stay with you for a really, really long time. Just to talk about like some of the visuals in the film though, quickly too, like, this is one of the most well shot films that I've seen in a long time. Any kind of like modern films, the cinematography is great. Uh, the picture quality on this 4k is amazing. So you really get to see the richness of like the colors and the HDR. Uh, Cronenberg has really gone out of his way to make a film that is psychedelic mixed with like modern sci-fi and, just gruesome kind of practical effects and all those things come together uh to make it one of the most visually interesting films that i've seen in a while and it's a film that you really have to think about too like it's not a film that you can watch and just kind of like you know go go on your day or have something else going on and be watching the film you really have to be like invested totally in this film to, to understand kind of any of what's going on uh and probably should watch it a couple of times too i know this is the second time i've seen this um and you pick up like all kinds of different things that are going on each time that you watch the film as well things that you wouldn't normally you normally expect from a film like this great performances by voss played by andrea riseborough uh great performance as always by jennifer jason lee like i think that she's pretty great in everything that she's in but the real star of this show to me is this edition of the film which i mean it i don't know like how you could really want much more from from a company because it comes in this deluxe box with this great artwork um great editions of the film and I want to spend a minute to um, talk about the special features because I actually watched those today. And there is a great um, making of kind of uh, interview called The Unfamiliar Life, which is a new interview with Brandon Cronenberg uh, that's part of the special features that he where he goes through like kind of pretty much every aspect of the film. And, you know what was the inspiration for it and how long it took to get made, which was apparently a really long time uh, over the course of his, I think he said his entire thirties, it took to get this film made. 
um, because finances and casting and things kept falling through. And this is an odd movie. I mean, it's not one that you, you know, probably investors jumped on or anything, but uh, uh, very kind of obtuse film. And then uh, there's a great uh, FX presentation with Dan Martin where he talks about the, the effects in the film. Uh, there's audio commentaries with Cronenberg and the producer. There is a new interview with Kareem Hassan and a new interview with Rob Coterell and disassociating from mind and body, Zoe Rose Smith on Possessor. This is more of like a spoken word, um, almost like a story that was in this as well. Uh, it's not so much like a like a talking heads piece or anything like that. Uh, test footage, archival footage too, and archival featurettes are also included. Like everything I mentioned before, this was all brand new to this release, but there's also a heightened world, a look at possessor featurette, identity crisis, bringing possessor to life, uh, the joy of practical effects, the effects of possessor and deleted scenes. Also the short film, please speak continuously and describe your experiences as they come to you, which was kind of a film that he was talking about making, around the same time he was making Possessor, in order to kind of get, I think, more of a budget for the film or get more interest for the film, he made like a short film to pass around. And it became kind of a a restart for him in a lot of ways. But like I said, there's a 120-page book with extensive behind-the-scenes galleries and screen-to-script comparisons. There's the art cards. It really doesn't get any better than this in terms of presentation. It's a fascinating film. It really is in terms of um, you don't see anything like this anymore. You don't see films like this much anymore. And I think really him, Brandon Cronenberg and his father are the only two people making films like this today. And so if you're a fan of David Cronenberg's films from the past, if you're a fan of Brandon Cronenberg's films, maybe you've seen Infinity Pool or Antiviral and you haven't seen this um check out possessor it's got to be one of the most visceral and original kind of films like this to be made over the last 10 15 years um you know we watch a lot of horror films we watch a lot of sci-fi films we, we watch a lot of exploitation films over at dead pit but this is a mixture of all of those things and with really smart storytelling and a really good script and really great visual direction. So I can't recommend um, Possessor anymore. And I also can't recommend that you, uh, that you check out Second Sight Films anymore. I mean, I've bought, I don't know how many different things from them and all of their releases are quality. There's a, there's another companion piece to this that just recently came out called Green Room. It's not a companion piece to this, but it's like a release that they just put out. And it is um, another great film that probably wouldn't get this kind of treatment had it not been for a company like Second Sight. So they're really like hitting it out of the park right now. They're picking some of the best titles. I won't say these titles are unknown, but they're lesser known titles with cult-like status that have genuinely good you know script cinematography uh storytelling genuinely good films that kind of are on the outskirts of popularity that they're picking up and turning them in with these great special editions that are immaculate so yeah uh check them out second sight films of course check out dead pit over in into the dead pit dead pit radio all that stuff um and until i see you again stay scared and stay dead give us the thumbs up Off you like subscribe and if you subscribe here's something else you can do once you subscribe you can click the bell notification right and it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a fuck. No, no. I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't let's, care. let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing.
Man, it's a night I need to do that. No, don't you yeah. do it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpits.com. Simply the best horror shirts on T Public. There are others. But they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The Hills Have Eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears start at only $1. We ain't never gonna change. We ain't doing nothing wrong. We ain't never